WBXO Classic Rock Redefined Special Edition on the Pat Show today. A pleasure to have singer, songwriter, and an incredible guitarist, Mr. Scott Hall of the band Earl and the Agitators All-Star Band. Hey, Scott, how's it going? And uh, certainly thanks for your time today. Hey, Pat, thanks for taking the time to talk to me, and it's going great, man. Glad to be on the phone with you. Yeah, no, cool, man. Um, Scott and this amazing all-star lineup officially just released a fantastic album just last Friday, Shaken and Stirred. And what I wrote down here was it really is an amazing entree of songs that features a lot of great rock and roll, blues, a dash of country, and you put it in a blender and you get this fantastic album. Scott, let me first begin and ask if you can explain for the folks, if they're not aware, who are Earl and the Agitators? <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good question. Um, about Probably about two years ago, I guess it might be longer than that. I'm not good with time sometimes, but uh, Roger and I were introduced by a mutual friend, and we got together and started uh, writing songs, me and him and, and Brian Bassett, Foghat's guitar player. And um, we just hit it off. We just had this really cool connection. We liked a lot of the same music, and, and we were interested in the same stuff, and, and we just got along really well. And we ended up writing a bunch of songs um, and recording some of them, and, and some of them ended up on Foghat's last record, which was called Under the Influence. And um, then we had all these songs left over, and we're like, well, what do we do with this? You know, And uh, we decided we were going to put a record out, and we didn't have a name for the band, and Brian said, well, why don't we call it Earl and the Agitator? <laughs> <laughs> and it just sort of ran from there. We kind of we came up with this whole, you know, backstory of everybody's an Earl, you know, and, and I was Earl number one, and Roger was Earl number four, because, you know, if you're the drummer, you have to be able to count to four. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask, how is Roger not number one? But, okay, now you answered that. Well, yeah, yeah, and I, I was lobbying for the same thing. I was like, man, I'll, I'll be, you know, Earl seven. I'm just glad to be here. And they're like, no, no, you're Earl number one. Possible, all right, you know. Yeah, no, that's really cool. And if I understand it, reading the the press release, the actual band began as a project, audio engineering graduation project out in Nashville with some students. And I'm going, how cool could that be? Roger Earl, Brian Bassett, yourself, and there's a bunch of students going. You know, I'm sure the jaws hitting the ground, going, what a what a what an opportunity, man! So cool. It was really cool. I mean, all the kids were, were awesome to work with. They were, they were, you know, just, just really, really, it was a really cool experience. Uh, the guy that, that set it up is a longtime friend of Rogers, uh, named Tom Mix. And, um, he, he, you know, threw it out there to Linda and said, Hey, you know, do you know anybody in Nashville that would like to record? And me and Roger were like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we know a couple of people. So, uh, so yeah, so we went to, we went to Nashville and, and did it there and, and just had a great time. And as I've never, you know, this is, this is one of the coolest relationships, you know, musical relationships that I have. I mean, Roger's a dear friend of mine. Linda's a dear friend. Brian, the whole, the whole band is all like a big family and it's just so much fun. To, to make music with them any chance we get. So this was a, a wonderful excuse for me to do that. Yeah, now you, I, I see that when I go to the shows and, and working with them all. And, uh, you know, you add Rodney and Tony and Mark, and I certainly got to add the, the late Craig McGregor as well on bass and the chemistry and the talent in this all-star band, which it really is, is top-notch. And the album, I mean, I've listened to the album at least two or three times, and it proves itself track by track. I mean, you guys really got some great stuff there. Let me, so, so let me just also, before we get into the album, so the folks know you are certainly an established musician. You had the opportunity to, uh, you know, work in Buddy Guy's band. I mean, how cool was that? I mean, uh, that, that's that's that that had to be a a, a great opportunity. That was uh, that was my very first uh, professional gig. Was I was Buddy Guy's guitar player for ten years, and um, I'd, I'd only been playing for about a year when I got with him. So it was. It was kind of, uh, you know, being thrown into the deep end of the pool. You know, <laughs> how to swim. And uh, I, tell, I told somebody recently, I, I was blessed by being so young that I was, I was too inexperienced to be nervous or fully appreciate. Gotcha. That. So 
I didn't I didn't have to go through the the fear of oh gosh I'm standing next to this legend and what am I going to do? You know, I was, <laughs> I was just a cocky kid. So and then now I look back on it, I get the cold sweats now. So <laughs> you know, but um, but yeah, buddy, he practically raised me, man. I, that was my first first time I left home. Uh, first time I was traveling. We traveled all over the world. I've been to every country in the world and. And all that's credit to Buddy. You know, he 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 was he blessed me with an opportunity to get a world view. So I Man. appreciate that more than anything. Man, timing is everything. So <clears throat> we'll fast forward, and uh, as I said offline, I got to see and meet you briefly at BB King's about. 2006 for the Foghat CD release party under the influence and what a killer show I mean the performance um, I, and I believe you guys when you came on stage you played um, Where Is The Rock and Roll and I mean it blew the roof off to join if I re if, was that the song you came on for? That that was uh, yeah I think that's the one we played. It's it's hard to remember. I think we did such a good job that they closed that place down. Didn't they? <laughs> yeah, sadly <laughs> yes. But I mean that song, um, that song was a killer. And I know as you mentioned before, right. three tracks under the influences on this album, the Upside of Lonely and uh, Honey Do List, and all because of you. Because I the minute I got it, I kind of recognized them because we all have a Honey Do List, and I'm like, oh yeah. Jesus. But uh, yeah, no, so kind of spreading the wealth around. I mean, Fog Hat and uh, Early Agitators, I mean, why not? But this album, I mean, get your dancing shoes on and get ready to party. Some rocking, boogie, woogie, blues, I mean, it, and listening to the tracks, you get a really great sense of just a group of friends having a blast and having some sort of fun master jam session. I mean, I, I, was that the, was that pretty much the case, Scott? That was that was totally the case. I mean, we would, you know, Roger and I would be sitting around. We both have a a, a real affection for Johnny Cash, and 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 I'm a big Sun Records fan of all the artists that came came out of Sun Records. And you know, growing up in Tennessee. You know, you, my, my influences were Nashville and Memphis, you know, so, um, but we would, we would be talking and, you know, Roger would mention the song, I guess things happen that way, and we'd just start playing it, you know. Um, Sunday Morning Coming Down was the same way, it was just a, a song that, that, you know, Roger wanted to hear what we would sound like playing, and so he suggested it and we played it. Whereas the rock and roll actually came up, we were uh, recording and we'd taken a break, we were down at their uh, Foghat studio in Florida, and Roger came in was at the drum kit, and he just started playing a groove. And so I had my guitar in my hand, so I just started playing, and, and we just we came up with the the, the music instantly. And uh, Brian came in and, and started playing slide on it. The song just came together, and you know the, the length of time that the song takes to play is about how long it took us to write it. Wow, I mean that is like engine started, rockets ignited, and fired and launched. I mean I just love that song, and you know track number, you know looking at the track list, Upside of Lonely, which I played yesterday on my show, is a really good kickoff to the to the really the, the masterpiece of this. And then you go to track two, where the rock, where, where's the rock and roll, and bam, you're you're get ready full speed ahead, and it's just <laughs> it is really cool. The other song that really you know it's all very good i love love isn't kind i mean you do a terrific job with that man wow thank you very much that's that's another you know another song that we we wrote together um roger had had the title in mind he came to me with the title and said you know what do you what can you do with this and brian and i started working on music and I started writing some lyrics, and, and it just kind of came together. So it's, I tell you, when you're when you're with 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 guys like that at that artistic level, it, it's it's all effortless. You know, it just it just comes. All the tracks are so polished. The lyrics, your vocals, the insane guitar riffs. I mean, oh my goodness, the songs are radio friendly. I mean, something that you can definitely listen to in the car and uh, play it loud and proud. I know your thing is loud and good, but I'm telling you, I could crank this in my car with not a problem. I guess Roger's uh, wife Linda's favorite song is all about that chick, Linda Lou. I was thinking about her listening to it before. I said, boy, she's got to be a happy person. Yeah, absolutely, man. We we you know we managed to you know Roger and I are both blessed with uh, having really strong, cool women in our lives. You know, his wife is awesome, and my wife's awesome, and so we we both 
we we both acknowledge how lucky we are to be made to <laughs> cool women. So we try to make sure we give a shout out to them every chance we get. No, it's a great, it's a really cool song. I love it. Yes, I and I have to third that because if it wasn't for my wife to allow me to go to all these shows and live my dream here, um, yeah, every every guy's got to have that good uh, backbone, and we are all fortunate. So I guess the biggest challenge is the logistics for a potential tour since, you know, Roger and the guys are constantly on the road. And I, I certainly it's a, that's a good thing. Are there any plans besides the um, February uh, 2019 um, uh, rock cruise? Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to figure that out. It, 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 that's another example of how this project sort of just sprang to life. You know, we, we didn't really have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> and so as you as you make the record and then you say okay we're going to put the record out and you don't have a plan and then you and we're trying to put it together on the back side uh foghead is really busy they're they're enjoying a, a tremendous amount of success right now and they're on the road constantly so that does make it difficult um to do any kind of you know proper tour um we're doing the the crew the rock cruise in february we've got uh, a date in uh, st charles illinois in march um i know that that you know linda's working real hard to try to put you know earl and the agitators as the opener for some of the fog hat shows which you know is fun for me but it's it's got to be hard on you know rodney and brian and and uh, roger because now they're playing you know two shows back to back so right and I, and I was going to say that. I mean, come on, Roger. But I and I, and I yeah, I was going to say, man, when can you open? But I'm like, yeah, I mean, double well, duty funny, for those the guys. Funny part is, Roger, you know, Roger's the one that's usually suggesting it. You know, it's it's you'd, you'd think it would be me or, you know, one of the other guys, but it's usually Roger going, well, let's just, you know, we'll play and then and then we'll take a break and then talk out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why don't we? Why don't we? You know, slow down just a little bit. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, I can see Roger saying that, you know, and, you know, you're an amazing guitarist besides a, an incredible songwriter, and I just had the luxury to uh, hang out with Eric Johnson, and when I deal with good, great guitarists, I always ask, how, Scott, how would you describe your tone? Oh, man, I... I know, you're, I know Hendrix was a big influence on you. Hendrix was a huge influence on me, I, and and you know of course Buddy was too. Uh, my three biggest influences were, were Buddy Guy, Jimi Hendrix, and BB King. And I always say that's that's like the three legs of my stool. Everything else is built on one man, you know. <laughs> that's uh, cool. Eric, Eric and I, you know, we go way back too. We had an opportunity to tour together back in the nineties, and I've always been a big Eric Johnson fan. And he, you know, he he blows me away every time I hear him. Play. Uh -huh. To get back to your question about tone, it's it's definitely the most personal uh, element for a guitarist, uh, for, I, for I imagine for any musician. And um, you know, it, it 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 took me a long time to to learn that the secret to to your tone is to get out of your own way. Um, it's not about you know which guitar you play. It's not about what effects you're using or what amp you're using. You know, you you're you're going to sound like you if you're playing through a cheapo you know practice amp and a cheapo guitar or if you're playing through you know sixty thousand dollars worth of gear so it's just your fingerprints man it's just like your face yeah no doubt and that's pretty much uh, eric's answer i said man anytime you want to go to a guitar store can i go with you because i want to see you just grab something you know my thing to him was how do you make how do you know what's an instrumental and what needs to be lyrics? I mean, he just he just fascinates me every time I see him and, and play, see him watch him play live is like totally insane, man. But oh, he's he's amazing, and he's such a such a sweet guy, such a cool guy. Oh yeah, he's just the earth. He wrote, and, he, and then he picks a guitar up, and it's, and you just like you know, you just want to put your guitar down. I I had a chance one time. This was back in the nineties. We were we were on a tour together. And uh, there was four or five bands on the tour. It was Buddy and, and Eric, and I think they had the Alligator All Stars. I think Junior Wells might have been on the trip, and, and Lonnie Brooks was there. And so Eric was he was having different musicians jam with him periodically on the on the stops on the tour, and he invited me to to sit in with him in Memphis. And I was like, yeah, that's that's great, man. I'd, I'd love to do that. You know, I was excited and, and nervous. And he kind of casually mentions, he goes, uh, yeah, uh, Sean Lane's going to play with us, too. And I don't know if you know who Sean Lane is, but he was a, a, a just a phenomenal guitarist from Memphis. Okay. Um, just, just, just if, you, if you have a chance, 
you know, YouTube or Google Sean Lane and listen to his playing. But needless to say, it's like somebody saying, hey, you want to go sparring with uh, Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll put my mouthpiece in and let you guys kick the crap out of it. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so I, we, we played and, and I was, you know, I was the goofball in the middle. But, but he's, he's always been such a really cool guy. Every time I get a chance to see Eric, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, no, he, he's, he's, he's fantastic. Yeah, you know, I listen listening to your other songs and um they're they're all great dude i mean don't burn down the bridge the grass ain't no greener on the other side of the track boy don't we all know that amen amen and, uh, to live by, actually. and uh, i love you more than you ever know well i got there's been many broken hearts out there you know so yeah yeah i can relate to that well scott man i uh, any um any other any other shows i'm coming for yourself or any projects that we can help promote you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working constantly. I'm trying to, uh, you know, do as much as I can. I just got off of a radio promo tour with a friend of mine named Tim Williams that your listeners will probably recognize if I told you he's the Trivago guy. I'm a Trivago Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he did a country record, and he was over here. He lives in Germany, but he was over here in the States doing some... Uh, some radio promotion so i just got through playing with him on that his record's called magnolia city i don't play on it but it's brilliant so if you're into country music check him out um i'm working with a girl named hurricane ruth who's a a rock and blues singer from st louis and um so i do a lot of stuff with her of course i've got my own band uh i own a, a independent record store you've got an independent radio show i've got an independent record store amen i see so uh you know I'll sell the vinyl. You play their songs, and then when they come looking for the records, they can come to me, and I'll sell them the records. I love it. I love it, brother. There's plenty to go around. That's what it's all about, networking. That's it, man. That's it. Well. So, yeah, I'm just staying busy and, and just blessed every day. You know, God lets me get up and pick up a guitar, and I've got a beautiful wife and a beautiful daughter, and, man, I couldn't complain if somebody put a gun to my head. Well, that is, that is awesome news, and we're all here for you, and, we, and, and I'm here certainly to support you. Loud is good, and twang is bang. We got to get you to New York, my man. You got to come to my station and hang out. Amen, man. We, we definitely got to do that sooner than later. So. There you go. Well, you can. Linda and the, Linda and the team on it, see if we can't pull something together. I will work on Miss Rose to take care of that, my man. You can check out all the information. Scott is on all the social media, scottholt.com, Earl, and the address. Agitators.com. They got some really cool T-shirts. Certainly buy this album. You will not be disappointed. Scott, I hope you enjoyed the chat as much as I have. Yeah, I really did, man. I thank you for taking time to talk to me. It's been man. talking to you. All the best success. The album is Shaken and Stirred, all-star band featuring the very talented Scott Holt. Keeping new music alive on the airways on the Pat Show on WBXO, where we are classic rock and we are redefined.